Hello everybody, this is Dr. Kevin Novak. Haven't done a video in a while because my old nine-year-old iMac 2009 was getting a little crabby. It was just starting to get a little slow, having problems with the uh, the iMovies that I make my projects out of, my videos out of, okay? And so I looked around and I went on the Apple website and probably priced out a new iMac. Of course, when I price something out, I like to make sure I upgrade it a lot. So like my last one lasted almost 10 years. And by the time I was starting to price one out, I was already up to uh, $3,700. And I thought to myself, well, for $3,700, I could buy an iMac Pro for $300 more. Now you're probably saying, well, no, you can't buy an iMac Pro for that. They cost $5,000. Yeah, but at the micro center, micro centers are selling iMac Pros, the base model, for uh, $3,999. They give you a $1,000 discount. That's a big discount. So why should I have a, just a normal iMac when I can buy an iMac Pro? That's what this video is being made off of uh, with 32 gigabytes of RAM and a, a better graphics card than my old one. Anyhow, everything's running smoother and a lot faster. Though my old iMac is great. It uh, can't compete with what I'm using now. But anyhow, getting on with the video, and that's the reason why I haven't been making them, is fertilizer tabs. And if you've been watching my videos, uh, you will have heard me advocate that you really don't need fertilizer tabs. Some people use them. Uh, it helps their plants grow faster. But uh, here's an aquarium. It's over 14, 15 months old. No fertilizer tabs are being used. And look at the sword plants. Uh, they're growing just fine. They're growing great, in fact. These sword plants are now the babies that were left from the emergent sword plants that died off. And these are the submergent babies that were left and these are have all grown from those plants without a substrate fertilizer and some of the little ones in front that you see on the left side those I just transplanted that were in the back growing uh, because they weren't getting enough light anymore and of course the ones that are in the front there I put there on some of my other videos if you watch them you'll see how, how big they have grown in the past two months without using fertilizer. You also see in the very front there that uh, dwarf baby tears, how it's starting to spread and grow out. Piece of cake. I know a lot of people having problems with dwarf baby tears or Monte Carlo, but it seems like I have no problems at all with the lighting system I'm using. Now, of course, the lighting system is the lighting system that I told you about in my past videos. It's a homemade lighting system. I explained to you how to make it, uh, how many uh, luminous it is, and it works just fine. And I've been using that for, ever since the tank's been up. You can see the Lotus. There's some on the center and there's some on the right-hand side growing. I didn't plant those on the right-hand side. They just start growing. There's also some more behind the sword plants just growing. So a lot of these plants, I put them in there when I bought them, they died out. Now look at that, they're all coming back. Uh, the temperature of the tank is 82 degrees and about the last four hours the tank's been on, I put Flourish, I put potassium in it and I put Flourish iron in. And as I explained in my video, I do that about the last four hours. I do have bad news. I lost two of the discs because of electrical problems we had here when it was 19 below zero. I was at work. The electricity went out. The tank temperature dropped. Uh, two of the discus really suffered bad. They all suffered. Were laying on their sides. But this guy made it and the other two couldn't take the cold and they just could not rebound from it. Uh, the angels did rebound from the cold snap. And this guy rebound from the cold snap. And, of course, I treated him with uh, malachite blue and stuff like that to make sure it wasn't getting him. 
the tank right now is about 82 degrees. I don't have it as warm as I did. At about 82 degrees, the fish are doing fine. Uh, water changes are done once a month. I'm using the anoxic filtration system. I'm also using the plenum. The tank is very dirty. And what I mean by the tank is very dirty is the fact that the substrate is extremely dirty now because of snails. I have uh, the Malaysian Liberian snails in there plus normal snails. So they're creating a lot of waste. Plus the fish, I feed them heavy. I can only feed them once a day. I do feed them heavy. Uh, so there's waste going into the substrate. But the substrate does have a plenum. The plenum helps keep the biological and chemical pathways open. And this helps move water through the substrate slowly. And if you think about it, some of the old timers have even mentioned that back in the 50s and 60s, we used to use undergravel filters with square filter plates. The thing that was different is the lift tube was only 3 8 diameter. It wasn't even a half inch. It was 3 8 diameter, and it used just a bubbler. And back then, pumps were very noisy, so you would set them so they weren't as noisy. And the bubblers were very slow, so you weren't moving very much water uh, through those under gravel filters back then. And actually what you had is almost like a plenum system that moved water very, very slowly and had anoxic conditions in your substrate. Well, as time went on, manufacturers got uh, more rank bunches and they, and they start putting uh, one inch tubing and then they start making under gravel filters that had separate plates. So you had more than uh, maybe you each plate would have, would have two one inch tubing so you'd have four tubes for a 55 gallon tank then they started using air stones to move the water through them which even moved more water through them and manufacturers kept changing and then pumps got on the under gravel filters before you know it the other gravel filters lost that an those anoxic conditions and they went to pure aerobic conditions and they also became these real bad uh, mechanical filters and they got a very bad reputation under gravel filters did because they became mechanical filters plus under gravel biological filters. Another problem was if any of the old timers are watching this you remember you couldn't really grow plants because the water was going through the substrate too fast and plants like anoxic conditions more than they do fast moving water going through the root system. They like water moving through the roots but extremely slow under low oxygen conditions oxygenated conditions but very low like two parts per million or less uh, they don't need high oxygen conditions aquatic plants they live very fine in anoxic conditions and plenums help you create a anoxic filtration system with your substrate and because I really can't get in there with an under gravel a vac, you know, a vacuum to clean it up, it's pretty dirty. And you can tell that through the, my uh, pre-filter, which I have a video on, gets dirty every two to three days and has to be changed because it's so filthy dirty that uh, it clogs up. So because of the detritus and everything free floating around in the aquarium, now you would think if I am fertilizing every single day just a little bit, uh, you would see all kinds of algae. Now look at all the driftwood in there. Driftwood looks like I just put it in, doesn't it? Looks like I just put it in two days ago. That driftwood's been in there for you know 14 months now. There's not one piece of algae on the driftwood or on the substrate or anything. Of course we're using an anoxic filtration system which is of course helping the algae problem which a lot of aquariums wind up incurring. Uh, I don't put an overabundance of nitrogen in because plants are looking for ammonia, not nitrogen. So therefore that starves the algae out. But look at the higher order plants, how well they're doing. Look at the lotus, how they all died back when I bought them. But look how they come back again. They're even in the back of the aquarium where the discus is on that side, uh, on the right hand side. I didn't plant those there. So some way the bulbs have split and they moved and they have rooted themselves and started 
growing in other parts of the aquarium. The sword plants that you see in the front on the left hand side, I moved those from the back because now they're not getting hardly any light at all. And they have recovered very well from me moving them. And these are all free plants. Of course, these are not the original plants I bought. So for you new hobbyists, don't think these are all the original. The original plants I bought, of course, have died because they were emergent plants that the grower grows. Now they take root. The leaves can't drown to death is basically what they do. And now the submergent leaves have to come out. So a lot of these are the little babies that those plants gave off before they finally gave up and the leaves just started rotting. And some of them come from the, uh, in the very back there, those come from the original root system of the plants that I bought at the uh, aquarium store. The main leaves all rotted away and those are all new leaves growing that uh, are doing great and that's about the full size of that particular sword plant but this is just to show you that after about 14 months that if you watch my videos you can see how the tank has changed through every month but the good thing of it is the algae is being kept at bay uh, there is a lot of Malaysian Liberian snails in here I do feed heavy I've had one mishap that was nothing I can do about it uh, the power went out and it was 19 below zero here in Chicago land and the tank just dropped and oxygen levels began to drop and of course the I had three discus and two of them when I got home they were all three laying on their side because the tank temperature had dropped and those two just uh, could not make it but this guy made it and it's doing fine and like I said one, once a month water change seems to be more than enough for this guy and he's doing great uh, skin's clear eyes are clear uh, eating good uh, getting along with the other fish the only thing I can say is he's not as smart as the angels he seems to go after the food he's slower the angels can pick it up faster but uh, she seems to be doing well very well uh, with very little problems and that's the whole thing that people, you know, with discus, they, they have problems, they're getting sick constantly. And if it wasn't for that temperature drop and the tank just going stagnated for I don't know how many hours, okay, I can't tell you because I wasn't at home. And when I got home, the electric company finally got everything up. Good thing of it is it only got in the 40s in the house, nothing freezing where no pipes or anything froze. But... This goes to show you that one of the discus made it and the other two didn't. There's nothing I could do for them. The goldfish made it, no problem. Yeah, the tank got cold, but for them, they were laying on the bottom, and then after everything warmed up again, uh, they came back. I did give everybody a treatment of uh, malachite blue, you know, for ick or anything. No one came down with any ick. But uh, everybody seemed to recover pretty good from it. Uh, it was touch and go. Like I said, two of the discs just didn't make it. They couldn't take the cold. And they could have had, if they were weakened in any way, and that cold snap came. Right now, the temperature of the tank is 82 degrees. It is not 84, 85. I put it a little cooler. It seems like the plants are growing a little better at a cooler temperature. And, of course, as you can see, the disc is doing just fine at 82 degrees. Don't need to have it as high as it was. And, of course, they like to hide in the back. A lot of fish now go in the back. Of course, this tank is 24 wide and 24 deep. So it's a pretty deep tank. So they do have some pretty good hiding spots in the back there. Also, I want to bring up that the root system to these plants isn't spreading out all over the tank because there's driftwood and stuff in the back. So the plenum is helping keeping those, that substrate oxygenated and keeping it moving, water moving through it like it should be where I think if I if you just put the substrate on top of the uh, glass you're interfering with the intersection of topography and the water is not going to move as easily th in and out of the substrate to make anoxic conditions and I think that's where fertilizer tablets may have to come into play or if you don't have fish 
okay, just like you would if you had a garden tub or if you have a pond that has no fish. Of course, you plant a water lily, you're going to have to put a fertilizer tab in it. You don't have any means of ammonia unless the plants are going to start rotting, and then, of course, you'll have ammonia. But for those who have, like me, a planted aquarium with fish in it, and you feed a lot, and a lot of food gets around, and uh, you will have enough ammonia for your plants. So all you need to do is add your iron and your potassium and, of course, your trace elements, which comes in the flourish chemicals that you buy for your uh, aquarium. Anyhow, I just thought I would make this video to show you that fertilizer tabs aren't needed. The baby tears is going great with the lighting system I have. And until next time, this is Dr. Kevin Novak. I wish you all the luck with your fish tanks.